Hey, it's Mike over at FisherHouseOff.com and today what we're doing is finishing up our boat building videos. How to build a boat from a mold part seven. Uh, this boat's almost done. So you got, I'm gonna finish the rub rails, get that all the way around. That's a pain, that is, that is a pain. Those things are kind of hard to do. Uh, get everything fared in exactly the way I want it for the final paint job. Uh, get everything looking real nice. I got some sea deck I'm gonna put on there. I got, uh, you know, lots of different things. I got like rulers and I got all the, the sea decking that I put down on the floors and everywhere else. I got to put down the non-skid stuff on the parts that aren't sea decked. Uh, what else I got to do? I got to, well, I got to put the engine on there, right? Still waiting on the engine. Still waiting on my trailer to be done. But uh, then I'm good to go. I just got to get it inspected and start fishing my ass off again like I want to do. This boat's really cut into my fishing time, so I'm hoping it's gonna make up for that once it's all done and I'll actually make it all back and then some. But that's the plan. So this is gonna be the last video on the bolt mold thing. So hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something. All right, bye-bye. All right, the plan for today is to get these uh, tracks up here onto the boat so I can put this rub rail on there and at least get the rub rail and stuff going. So here's where I'm at right now. Just getting started, kind of feeling my way around it. But uh, you know on these corners you gotta kinda this stuff's pretty rigid. You can't you can't just bend it. But here's what it's gonna look like. Just like that. So it's gonna cover most of this mass, almost all the mass, which is what I want. So, there you go, just like that, pretty nice. And I had to do some more fairing, trying to get these seams to look a little bit better. Got some over there, got some places there I need to fix up, here, there. But uh, really just trying to get all the cosmetic stuff going. Uh, you know, I got the next couple days off, so hopefully I can get uh, a lot of work done. But that's where I'm at for right now. All right, so I got my tracks up. Here's the way you got to do the corners. I tried doing full pieces. It just didn't work. There you go. Get your whole track done like this. I use inch and a quarter stainless steel uh, screws. Pan heads, I think. Yeah. And, uh... There you go. So I started putting the rub rail on. It looks real good, I think. Yeah, real good here. So that's how it's going to look with the end cap and everything. So it covers all that mess I made by having all these different layers. And when you do this uh, rub rail stuff, you basically, let me see if it's going to work. You basically just pinch it on like this. Just pinch it on. Ugh, really hard to do. That's all you do is you just push, push like this and it snaps right around it. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I am pretty happy with it. It's been pretty tedious. It took me a few, a couple hours just to get these uh, rails on and get them right and just everything. So next I'm going to smooth all this uh, fairing I did and get this thing primed and painted and then uh, finish putting the uh, rubber rail on. So that's where I'm at. Well, getting pretty close to the finish line here. I'm just trying to fix the last uh, rails going on there pretty well. I'm going to finish putting the rail on here today. Uh, I got all these little nip, nicks and cuts and problems that I'm going to need to uh, sand and paint here today. From here up so basically about here is going to be all um, sea decking. So that's why I'm not going to fix, bother that reinforcement or anything like that. But so I got everything fared in the way I want it. I'm really thinking about putting rub rails on the inside. So right across there on either side and just have the front and the back uh, be all nice. I ran out of fairing which sucks. But, uh, yeah, I'm really thinking about that. I think that might look cool. 
and it might help to hide some of these uh, imperfections. You know, I cut those angles wrong on my rod holders, so I had to add stuff to them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so that's the next step. I'm going to start wiring it some stuff up in here. You know, getting all these wires. There's my little bilge pump holder and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to get things wired up today. And uh, hopefully get get, the, get a coat of paint on this thing. And maybe even put the sea deck on the front. So that's, that's the goal for today. Well, got the rub rails on. Looks really good. Covers up all that mess, too, I made by having uh, such a thick deck. You know, I had three layers of stuff. So this was about the biggest rub rail I could find. 52 centimeters so I don't know I think it looks great I think it looks great so now I just have to uh, finish making the uh, the inside there I decided I was just gonna ferret in instead of I was gonna put a rub rail inside just to cover all that mess so you can see all the mess right there it's a layer of nitacor and then a layer of trans transom stuff and another layer of night of course so I really overdid the uh, the decking but uh, I wanted it to last forever I didn't want to think about it ever messing up but uh, yeah it looks pretty good it looks real good so now I just gotta figure out what I want to do up here you know if I want to put sea uh, decking there or just uh, make this look nice but that looks horrible right now so I gotta figure out what I want to do but yeah, I'm real happy with it. I am real happy. It's looking great. Look at that. That is a good looking bumper right there. Okay, so I'm over here. Got uh, got everything fared in that I want to. I was going to put rub rails in there, but I decided just to make them nice enough to paint. So just made all that real nice. So I got a bunch of rub rail material left over, like 30 feet of it. There you go. Yeah, just doing some fairing. I'm going to add those, uh, these little U-bolt uh, hook things uh, right up front here so I can attach, uh, I don't know, anchor ropes, coolers, whatever. Yeah, so there we go. Just getting everything all touched up, but uh, looks real good. Yeah, I mean, look at this bad boy. That looks like a legit boat. You know, you, you, you'd be hard to tell I had no idea what I was doing the whole time. So I got my sea deck for the front here. This is some of the camo stuff. These are 40 by 80 uh, sheets you get. Um, they're expensive. I think it was like $178 for this stuff. So it's pretty expensive stuff. But I wanted to be broken up. I have the straight gray for the back and uh, so I got this for up front kind of make it look better I think it's gonna look good nice little piece like that I gotta trim these sides the way I want it and uh, figure out how to stick this on without screwing it up because I know once you get it on there probably not coming off so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down and then uh, cut the shape for the outside of it uh, you know with my uh, razors here and uh, yeah see if i do it right <laughs> so let's just see how this works out i might waste 178 dollars right in five minutes all right i got it cut out the way i want it i think it looks pretty good i think it looks real good actually so nice big pad up front here i think that's pretty cool so it's cut out the way i want it now i just have to <laughs> get it on there straight oh my god this is gonna be a pain this is gonna be hard that's a big piece of stuff right there but so that's what I want it to look like is this so we'll see we'll see okay so what I got down is I got this part set down stuck down so it should be good but like anything, you know, when you're doing this, you gotta make sure there's no air bubbles in it. So now, I have to carefully get the rest of this stuff stuck down. Alright. So I'm going to flip this over this way. 
hopefully this will keep it staying put. We got a big chunk of it stuck down and then I'm just gonna pull this out as I go. I skipped a step. You gotta clean it with acetone first. I forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> yeah, clean everything you're gonna do with this first and then stick it on. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm basically just pulling the backing off of it a little bit at a time. And I say a little bit, just a couple of inches. Cause like I said, this is a $200 piece of stuff by the time you get it shipped to you. So I better like it, <laughs> but yeah, that's it. So I just pull off the backing a few inches at a time, smooth it all down. Cause the last thing you want is air bubbles. Uh, and here, I'm going to finish up right now. Boom, and there you have it. I like it. God, I was nervous about this. Ah, I like it, I like it. Just adds a little color to the front of the boat. Covers up all that mess I made. I didn't feel like making, fixing that seam. There's a seam for the front deck, so God, I like it. So I got some of this camo scrap left over i got this gray stuff too i think i'm gonna uh kind of put that right in the middle like that i think that looked pretty cool some space in between it yeah i want to use all this stuff because it's so expensive so what doesn't look uh what doesn't come up top and uh, look good i'm gonna put back underneath just to make things not rattle so i'll be putting some underneath the back here and i'll put some up underneath the front just for the anchor to sit on for the front and the back or whatever i decide to do so i'm going to use this stuff up much as i can but i think that's going to look pretty cool kind of break it up a little bit yeah i'm real happy with the way that turned out that looks good that little cut in between it so water can just go right through the channels i like it i like it and I got that in the front. I got to put this ruler on here because uh, I really didn't do a very good job with this seam, you know, putting those two together. But uh, that'll hide some of it. <laughs> I got to repaint it first because you can see all the uh, primer and stuff showing through. So I didn't didn't put a good coat on. I got to finish making all that even anyways. Get that all kind of sanded in there. You know, the back sanded in pretty well. This fairing I did. Get to get that all painted. You know, all these uh, pink spots need to get sanded and painted. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. That's gonna look cool. That big, uh, that big ruler right there too. So the other side is gonna have, um, you know, my uh, my pole for pulling, you know, to push the boat around with. So I'll have clamps to hold that and everything, and the pole, and uh, back here. Uh, I still got to get a polling platform. I mean, used ones are like four or five hundred dollars, so new ones a thousand. So I might as well just do something exactly the way I want it for a thousand instead of trying to save five hundred bucks. But man, that's looking great. This boat's starting to look cool. I like it. I like it a lot. I know I'm biased because it's my boat, but I, I really like it. I think it looks great. I think it's looking cool. I didn't cuss one time today either, not once. So that's a that's a good one too. You can tell I'm having a good day. Everything went perfectly. I can't even believe it. <laughs> the sea deck's easier than I thought it was going to be. It really is. Uh, it has a lot of adhesion properties, so make sure you get it right. So I had lines drawn in the front, and the back, and the sides, and everywhere, uh, just so when you get that first part down, it's got to be perfect. Yeah, so this was a straight line, and you can tell I missed it by maybe an eighth of an inch in the end. But hell, no one's going to notice that once that line's not there. So, you know, that, that's pretty, pretty good. You know, it'll only be an eighth of an inch off for a piece this big. It's 40 inches by 80 inches, so that's a big piece. I got to put some in here. I just have the gray stuff, like in the back, that's going to go inside, inside here. And that's going to cover up all that mess on the floor that I have. Uh, it's going to look great. All right, so I'm here putting out my last piece of sea deck here. 
going to be pretty good. If you're wondering what this uh, lock and chain is, I come home. So this is all locked to my uh, my little stand I made. I came home and uh, the tarp had been ripped off and all the ties had been untied and uh, looked like the boat had been moved. So I wasn't sure if someone was trying to steal it or just got inside the boat to see if there's any electronics or anything. But yeah, that sucks. So I had spent 50 bucks on a chain and uh, a lock. Ugh, people. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. All right, I got to figure out where I want it and I'm going to put it down. Well, that went much easier as expected than expected. Yeah, that worked out really, really well. So it's pretty easy as long as you just you stick a little teeny bit of it at a time. If you try to do a big chunk, you're going to get air bubbles in it. But yeah, that worked out real well. That took me like five, ten minutes. But just make sure you get the edges all pushed down because the last thing you want once you get all this done is for water to get up in there. But yeah, all my different sea decking, I am done. God, that was easy. But it covered all those seams and, and stuff that I didn't feel like making nice. Yep, that looks good. All right, next I got to put my rod holders in. So now what I'm going to do is put these rod holders in. I want a rod holder, you know, right here in the front on both sides. In the back, I should be okay because I'm going to have the uh, uh, pulling platform back there. But yeah, i got to figure out where I want to have them here up front. So I definitely want a rod holder you know, somewhere around here. So that's what I'm figuring out next. All right, so here's where uh, the pole holder has to go because of the slants of the uh, you know, the way the boat slants backwards very abruptly. So I'll show you from the inside. You see how that is? Big, uh, big um, slant to it. So that's why I had to be that far back. I'd have preferred to have it a little closer, but what are you going to do? Yeah, so I miscalculated a little bit on my hole. <laughs> Put a little too far this way. I needed to be that way a little bit more, but that's why I had to use the, um, you know, the, uh, whatever you call that saw, a jigsaw to uh, make it more elliptical shape. But it works. It works. It looks pretty good. See, because I wanted this big angle. So, there we go. One rod holder. Now I just got to do the same thing on the other side. So I wanted to show you a core of this Nidacore stuff that I built this boat out of. See how it's got a honeycomb in there? Well, I filled that with silicone, 100% silicone, just so water couldn't get inside the actual deck itself. So I filled all that, and um, then I actually put uh, silicone around the actual, you know, the, the whole perimeter of both of these, uh, both these rod holders. I think they look cool. I think it turned out real nice. Maybe I'll do some in the back. I don't know. So there's the rod angle on those rod holders I just put. So I think it's going to be pretty good. You know, I had to do that, uh, that, that much of a slant just to match the sides and keep them as close to the sides as I could. Here we go. Decent day's work. Got all my sea deck down. Got my rod holders in. Yeah, I really got to figure out how to hold the poles, you know, my fishing rods, inside there. So I'm going to need some sort of string or elastic something to, uh, to keep the rods from flopping out when you're driving. So that's my next little chore. So here's all I decided to do as far as uh, tying my rods in. It's just a stainless steel screw, you know, and I have uh, uh, just just some of that 550 cord, the paracord stuff. Well, that's it. So that's how I decided to do it. I think that's just going to be an easy fix for now. If it doesn't work, I couldn't find any uh, any elastic cording like I wanted. 
Well, I've been waiting and waiting for the engine to come so I could show you the finished product of my boat build. It's been three months since I ordered it. Everything's on back order because of the coronavirus, so I decided just to film it without the engine. So the only thing it's missing is its engine, obviously, and a, a pulling platform, but I'm not building either one of those, so... This is, uh, this is what I ended up with. This is what I got built. So I got a nice aluminum uh, trailer here. Everything's aluminum. It's got the torsion axle. It's, uh, yeah, real nice. Foldable tongue and everything. It was pretty expensive. Because it had to fit in the garage. So I had to have one special made. Um, and then uh, here's the boat. So my total cost is going to be, once I have the actual engine, it's uh it's gonna be fifty eight hundred bucks for the engine. So that brings my total cost to just under twenty thousand dollars is what the whole build is gonna end up doing. I made about two G's worth of mistakes, so it would have been about uh eighteen thousand, but whatever. What are you gonna do? That's it. It's my cooler. I just got out of a salvage yard. Those are the ones that come in the Boston Whalers. It's on 150 bucks. But there you go. There you go. So that's what it ended up looking like in the end. Mine is an engine and a pulling platform.